My plan is to get a video out there so other people can follow along on how this is done. I've got a comma three, a Ram 2500, and um, yeah, I'm gonna try to document this and put it together to see if it can help others as they do it. So right now, uh, I'm still waiting on the part. It'll show up tomorrow. So I'm just gonna route the uh, ethernet cable that came with the unit. I've gone ahead and plugged that part in. Um, so I'm just gonna figure out how to route the cable so it goes up to the uh, camera up there. Figured I'd capture this real quick. I did notice this was on a, a swivel, I don't know. And I just went ahead and popped it off to give myself more room. All right, so the first step is to remove this thing, which I'm struggling finding YouTube videos on or anything else. I have had my first success, which is I just took a flathead screwdriver, I wedged it up here, and then I wedged out like that. So that's my first step. I don't know what second is yet. I'll record it in a second. I guess step two is to break it. <laughs> don't do what I did. I came down here, but I heard something break here and here, and I actually saw it rip here. You're not gonna be able to see it. it's too dark in here. See if this helps. It does not. So, all right, I don't know a solution for it. I mean, it looks fine still, but I definitely broke something. Yeah, so I made the exact same mistake as someone else I saw on the internet. I mean, he had the exact same problem. Broken at the bottom, broken there. I'll see if I can find the stupid part number and how much this stupid thing costs. Um, yeah, I don't know how this thing gets out without breaking. I tried to tab it out. I had success at the top but not at the bottom. I might find these pieces and just super glue it and see if that solves them problem too. All right, this doesn't bode well for the rest of this project, but I finally got this thing off and I want to just really explain how this thing is on there so people don't struggle with it. Here are four holes, all right? This thing doesn't slide, doesn't, like I've seen people online, like it looks like it slides out. It doesn't slide out. There are literally these metal clips that are in here. Now this one fell off. It's supposed to be on this thing. I'll put that back right, I can't do it. I'll fix it in a second, but whatever. Uh, you can see, here's one right here. Now, I just wanna be really clear what's going on there. It's straight down. This thing took an immense amount of body weight for me to pull this thing down. So I'm like pulling on it, it's ripping as hard as I can down. It's not coming down. My best, the way I got it to work is I put a screw screwdriver in through here uh, because on the, put this back up for a second. So as this thing was up, if you look and I turn this thing around, you'll see there's actually a little a notch right there. I found that I got my screwdriver in there and I was able to get up into this and torque it down and it made a god awful sound like it was like I broke it, but I actually didn't break it. So that's what you're dealing with is these notches and you just gotta pull on it hard. Uh, the people in the forum are telling me that it it, loose, it loosens up after you do this a couple times, but for me, I had to put an immense amount of strength to get that to come down, so I hope that helps. And after pounding that back in place using a, a vise and a flathead screwdriver, I'm able to get it. Now you can see how the teeth are designed to hold it in place. I must have put the amount of force on it to pull that straight out. So anyway, we got four of these guys. It comes straight down, but I just think it's important to see the angle. Um, of these things coming down. So this is my windshield angle. If you can kind of see it, it's like this. These things are almost um, 90 degrees to the windshield. So that's the direction you need to pull down is 90 degrees uh, towards kind of the back of the truck, but it's down and 90 degrees to the wind windshield. All right, I'm running out of light tonight, but I wanna show a couple things that people I'm talking to on the forums are, are, are saying are not normal. My mirror's falling off this thing somehow needs to go back on this. I'll figure that out in the morning. And uh, I pulled this out earlier to give myself some space. And my plan now is to just use a clamp to put it back together because I tried doing it and max strength for me was not enough to get that to go back on. So I'm about to do it with a clamp. I'll let you know if it works. Clamp did it, got it back in. Uh, it was a little bit tricky, but I think if you know how to use a clamp, you could probably figure it out. If you're following along, I just want to shoot another video because if you're getting frustrated, you know, so am I. So this video might be condensed down to five, 10 minutes or so, but you know, we all get frustrated. It's night, can't get my mirror back on. We'll figure it out in the morning. Before I give up on the, for the night, I was able to find both of the pieces I broke here. So that one and that one. I have some contact cement, so I'm gonna put it together. If I had super glue, I'd use that, but this is what I have. So this will hopefully make me feel a little bit better.
All right, there we have it. I had to wait about five minutes for it to dry, and then I shoved the two parts together, and it's back to normal. I just got something in the mail today. Um, this is the dev kit, what it comes and it looks like, so you can kind of create your own punch out. I'm, I don't have patience for that, so there's a person on the forms that makes this, which I just received, and so this piece is gonna replace that piece, and I'm about to plug that in. Unplug that, plug the new thing in. So I'm assuming that's gonna go plug in there somehow, I'm about to go figure that out. All right, so this took me a second to figure out. So this thing came in, and this end is plugged into this thing, right? So just unplug that, and there's a connector up here that you just slide off, you push this little thing and it slides off, and then this guy that you just bought will slide in there and click. Okay, so then my question was, well, this has got to plug into this thing, but it could, I could potentially do it upside down. So here's what I'm gonna recommend. Look at the cables here. There's one, two, three at the bottom, and there's the black one at the top. Just make sure that the theory here align to those, and I'm sure it's gonna work just fine. And now the fun part, where I get to plug an ethernet cable into there, and then down there. Uh, I'm just gonna do this short for right now to make sure everything works, so I'm probably not gonna record this part, but I'll show you the first boot up. I just feel like if you've been with, doing this with me, you should experience the first boot with me. So right now I got the ethernet cable in a very not safe way. Uh, I'm not gonna unplug this thing in, so we're gonna see what happens. Up, oh, I see a comma. Because I think I'm funny. Uh, I wonder if you can guess what my wife's name is. Uh, all right, so uh, after it connected to Wi-Fi, it had an option, and I didn't show you, sorry, that basically says, do you want to install it as a dash cam or custom software? I click custom software, and then this screen came up, and uh, that URL I'm sharing comes from a, a document that's online that's inside the form, so we're about to see if that works. I'm trying the longer URL this time. If this doesn't work, I'm going to set up a GitHub account. All right, that one worked. Cool. All right, sorry for the noise. I know I got the AC blast and it's hot today. Uh, so I got a couple things in this kit, uh, which was the harness, but I also got this 3D printed comma AI thing. Um, so you can see it says comma AI. I just wanted to show how that mounts on there. It's uh, angled like that. So you can kind of picture this thing on the windshield and the comma AI is facing you dead center and it will line up. If you're doing it right, it'll line up and then you put the two screws in it. Now that I've got that installed, uh, I need to stick this to that, uh, and then that's gonna mount to the um, unit up there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and follow the other directions, which is I'm gonna put an alcohol wipe on this, clean it up really good, and then I'm gonna stick that on there. All right, that's off, that's on there. Uh, comma says to wait 48 hours, but it does give you, they say you can do it for a quick drive if you want, but 48 hours, that's supposed to be here, so I'm gonna leave it alone. I might shoot this a different thing. I should have done that yesterday, uh, honestly, in hindsight, that way it would have had longer time to be connected. So this might be something to do earlier on in the project. Uh, I also discovered my mirror is a monitor display. Had no idea. Look at that. Who knew? Uh, I've had this truck for a year. <laughs> anyway, uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I accidentally knocked this mirror off when I took the plastic thing down. So someone online showed me how to fix it. You actually take the mirror and up here at this pivot point, you need to be 45 degrees off. You put push against hard, as hard as you can and you just click it into place. Super simple if you know what you're doing. All right, so now that I got everything plugged in, I've got my mirror back on, I was looking for a place to put this black box. This is the best I came up with. I put it up here and it's coming out so all the cables are coming out that way and, or sorry, coming out on that end. So that's my suggestion for you. All right, now, now that I've got that adhered, I went ahead and I just started pushing that ethernet cable along the lines here. It's here so far. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna record all this, but I'm gonna figure out how to snake it down uh, from there to the bottom. All right, now that I've got that snaked, I just want you to see what I did. I came across here. You can see a little bit showing here. I used this plastic thing here, ran it into the weather stripping and down, um, and then it's exposed again right here because it's just getting too tight. So I have it right there. Hopefully it's not a big deal. Um, uh, oh man, I'm a little bit concerned, but it is a flat cable. So that's kind of an advantage right there. I'm still kind of fiddling with it. 
Uh, I just couldn't get this thing to stay in the um, thing. It wanted to come back here. So it's flat. I'm not too worried about it. Um, you know, it comes across. It's, it's really tight here. So I don't like it, but I'm at the maximum length of this cable. I don't know how I can make it any shorter. All right, so I was showing the, this cable. Someone on, I'm actually day three here, so this is out of order, but someone online told me I can actually open this panel, so we're going to give that a shot. Before I get this open all the way, I actually went down here at the brake pedal. Oh, can I fit it the way? I actually went down here at the brake pedal and pushed with my fingers against it, which made it wedge out. So now that it's wedged out, I'm not too concerned about me getting the rest of it off. It's going, but yeah, I pushed under here against it. Yeah, this is gonna do good. So now it's coming down at this point, going inside. I've hit it back there. You can see it way back here. And then I've now got a lot, not nearly as tight down here, which is good. Um, so yeah, that was a good suggestion. One other thing is I didn't like this cable dangling, so I just pushed it up. There's a little screw right here, so it's behind that screw. Followed it around. There was something up here. I was able to hook it behind. So I don't have to wire tire anything. It's now completely hidden. Very cool. I'm in the process of putting this back on, so I'm just aligning it. I'm gonna be pushing it against the windshield. And that took me all about two seconds. That was a lot easier than taking it off. Uh, so now I gotta get this final piece on, which I still have in the garage uh, from Kieran up from last night. All right, I didn't have the patience to wait. It already fell off on me once. I'm in the calibration progress process. Uh, that's my <laughs> cherry rig setup to make it not fall a second time. Hopefully it doesn't fall. We'll see. It's definitely about to go off-road though. It is very uncomfortably to the right side right now. <clears throat> this is my first time doing it. Doing 45 miles per hour on a backcountry road. I'm now more in the center. It's doing a curve right now for me. Oh, this is nerve-wracking. Going off, going off. <laughs> Uh, not quite as good as my Tesla autopilot, uh, but we'll try it again here. I'm on my first drive with autopilot. I'm finding that on the, if the curve is a little too tight, it can't do it. But I also just discovered that if I take the wheel and fix it, it doesn't yell at me. Uh, here we go. We got a pretty tight turn to the left. It's doing all right. Let's see, I'm going to lose it. I got to take control. I was going to lose that. Keep it in lane. I like this better than Tesla in that I can just control it, get it back where I want it to be, and it's not, it doesn't disengage or anything. See, I'm now going way, way, way too far out of lane there. Yeah, it definitely struggles on hard turns. I'm on a backcountry road here. But again, I can control it, and it's not like I'm fighting it. I don't know if anyone has a Tesla out there, but um, with the Tesla, you really got to fight that wheel and, and take control back. Here it almost feels like I have a partner driving with me. And I was like, hey, you're off the road, let me correct you a little bit. But here I'm back on a straight, you know, it looks perfectly fine there. Um, and of course I got another big curve coming up. Not sure if you can see it. We'll see how it handles this one. I don't have a lot of faith that it's gonna handle it. Okay, it's crossing the yellow line and there's an oncoming guy, so I'm taking it over. I got it. And uh, that's the end of my run. I just hit the brake. So that's it, that was my first run. Uh, not terrible. Uh, I have, I've had every Tesla autopilot system that's been out there. Um, this is a bit better than autopilot one. Uh, autopilot one could not have done that road I was just on. It would have ping ponged all over the road. So yeah, pretty good for my first run. I was asked to give my uh, first impressions of driving with this thing, uh, with the Kama AI. So if you're interested, keep listening. If not, you know, I hope the, in the intro of this video helped you install it. Um, so I'm the, the best way I can give my first impressions is to compare it to uh, my Teslas. So I've had every Tesla that's been invented. I've had every autopilot that Tesla has put out there. And to me, this is above autopilot 1.0. It's somewhere around 1.5, 2.0, somewhere in that range as far as like its comparison. It's not quite as good as the new stuff. Uh, like my wife has the latest Tesla with three. I think it's three, um, and that one's superior to this. But hey, that's a multi-billion dollar corporation. This is like a crazy CEO with, on a mission, and I'm starting to really like this guy. Um, 
so it's it's good and i really do mean that to be this is this is a really good impression uh of using this thing but there's one thing in particular i want to call out that comma is better than tesla on and tesla should take note um so with a and, and so i'm sorry if you never run a tesla this might even not care to you but i just want you to understand there's some differences in these technologies out there uh with tesla you engage it you, you know you double click and it engages right um, and when it engages, it is, think of it as like Tesla just took the steering wheel and it's driving, right? Yeah. It t forces you to keep your hands on the steering wheel, which is actually more annoying than I think than safe. Um, but it's driving. And if I want to take control again, I can either disengage it. Uh, I can hit brakes, um, or I can grab the steering wheel. The most common way I do it is I grab the steering wheel. Cause if I'm taking control, most likely it's cause I, I'm not liking something going on. And the problem is with Tesla, you have to yank it. And think of it this way, like if there's this smooth graph of, you know, moving things around and it's nice and smooth. For Tesla, think of there's a hump in there and you've got to take it, take the steering wheel and kind of fight past that hump uh, to, to let it give you control back. It's just, it's part of their safety features. So you literally do feel it, you fight Tesla to take control again. Um, and when you do that, the car often jerks a little bit because you are on a steering wheel and you're moving 70 miles per hour down a road. So boom, the car, it's just a slight jerk, but you can feel it. My wife always feels it. Um, and that's how it works. So it's either Tesla's driving or it disengages and you're, you're driving. I made a comment in my first test run, and I think that comment's really re relevant here, that this feels more like a partner also has their hands on the steering wheel. There's no disengagement when I take control and just correct that a little bit. So if it's veering to the right and I just kind of say, nah, I'm, I'm more comfortable if you're over here, it, it doesn't disengage, it doesn't yell at me, it doesn't say, hey, your car now, I'm done driving. That's what a Tesla would do. It just lets me correct it and I let my hands off and it never stopped steering, but it never fought me either. It just allowed me to correct the direction of the thing and I let off and the thing keeps going on. It is my favorite feature. And maybe it's not something you pick up if you've never used autopilot before, but this one just feels like there's four hands on the steering wheel, but my hands are in charge. And the moment I let off my hands, um, the other hands just have never let go. And they just say, okay, I'm driving, you know? So it's a teenager at the wheel, adult at the wheel. Um, so yeah, it, it's a, by far my favorite feature of this thing. Uh, and it's all in all pretty good. I'm really excited. I'm about to do a couple thousand miles on this thing. so. I'll let you know how that goes.